This video is about arc length and the unit tangent vector. This content here is really just a fancy way of saying that distance is equal to rate times time. So we're imagining some parametrically defined curve and the uh, a, the particle is moving along the curve and we want to calculate the arc length of the curve. So you imagine uh, x changing by some small amount and y changing by some small amount and that producing a tangent line approximation for the distance that the particles traveled. And then I, I swear I went over this in a previous video about how these two things are equivalent. Um, and then I'm asking you now just to have the realization that uh, when you calculate the velocity, you take derivatives of the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, and then when you calculate the magnitude of the velocity, you're basically just like plugging those derivatives into the Pythagorean theorem, and that's exactly the same thing that's happening in these two pictures. So, um, you know, w when you look at this formula, uh, you know, you need to be ready to go back and forth between those two forms of it. And hopefully you can also see by looking at this that ds is a distance. The magnitude of the velocity, we've been calling that the speed, that is a rate, and dt is some change in time. So this is really just another way of saying that distance is equal to rate times time. We know already that the velocity is a vector that points in the direction of motion but sometimes we want to strip away the speed aspect of it and only focus on the direction that the particle is moving in. So what we do is we take the velocity and we scale it down by the magnitude. This produces a unit vector that's pointing in the same direction as the particle is moving and we call it t hat, the unit tangent vector. Now imagine that the particle was moving along a path and I chopped the path up into a bunch of pieces, then I could approximate each one of those pieces using ds. Um, and so then, then each one of these pieces is approximately ds. It, it's an approximation because uh, the actual arc length is curved and we are using the uh, tangent line in order to approximate the distance. Um, so if we added up all of these little pieces of the path, I would get approximately, I wrote equals, I should put approximately equal to the total arc length. And then what you need to do is take the limit as delta t goes to zero, uh, and the sum will become an integral. And so we calculate the arc length traced out by a particle uh, by integrating ds. We call this quantity ds the arc length differential. Uh, the idea is it's an approximation of a little piece of the arc, and the word differential implies that we're using the tangent line to approximate that distance. The nature of this arc length differential formula produces integrals that are usually not easy to calculate. Um, and as a student in a Calc 3 class, that's actually kind of good for you because um, that means that there's not going to be a lot of variety in uh, what type of problems show up on the test. Um, of course, I have graphed this curve in Calcplot 3D. Um, so here we have a picture of the curve. Um, and there is the point. I have also, uh, you can see that this curve does not have anything in the y-coordinate. It's a zero. So uh, we never leave the xz plane. Um, and let's just zoom in a little bit. So you click the little cog and then, um, so right now I'm having it graph the, the trace point. So that's r of t, the position of the particle. Uh, and then also the velocity vector, that's the long black vector. You can see it is going in the uh, the direction that the particle is moving, and then also that purple one there, that is the unit tangent vector. So I've got R of t, and I'm I'm asked to calculate the arc length and the unit tangent vector, so I'm going to start by finding the velocity at any time. So I'm just taking derivatives of uh, all the coordinates, so uh, the derivative of t with respect to t is 1. 
uh, and then zero is zero. So you can see if I use the power rule, I'm gonna move this three halves and it's gonna cancel with the two thirds. Um, so this problem is kind of nice. And then three halves take away one is one half. So now I've calculated the velocity. So I'm gonna calculate the magnitude of the velocity. Uh, I get the square root of one plus t. Recall that the unit tangent vector is just the velocity scaled down by the magnitude of the velocity. So uh, we're, we're really getting there. Um, so to find the arc length and the unit tangent vector, so let's do that. So that's just going to be 1 over the magnitude of v times v. Okay, so this is a scalar. And this is a vector, and the way that you multiply scalars and vectors is you multiply the scalar times each of the coordinates. Uh, so the final answer here is 1 over square root 1 plus t, uh, 0, and then I'm going to, I have just like one big square root here. Everything is, is uh, underneath the radical, so I'm just going to square root everything and put t over 1 plus t. Okay, the next thing for us to do is to get on with calculating the arc length. But before we move on, I want to point out something at this stage. This calculation for t is always going to involve some kind of Pythagorean theorem ending up in the denominator. So uh, this is going to come back up later, but I just want you to observe now that if we were to take the derivative of this, sort of no matter what, it's always gonna involve like a lot of chain rules and product rules and quotient rules because chances are these things aren't gonna simplify and we're gonna have a bunch of uh, functions underneath the radical. Okay, so uh, now I'm calculating the arc length. So I have to add up a bunch of tangent line ap approximations of little pieces of the curve. Um, so the uh, integral of ds, the, the range of t's is from 0 to 15, so that's how I got these limits of integration here. And then remember that ds is the magnitude of v dt. Uh, so here I calculated the magnitude of v, so I just put that inside the integral here. And um, this shouldn't be too tough, an antiderivative to calculate. So this thing right here is really 1 plus t to the 1 half power. So um, I'm using the power rule. Add 1, I get uh, 3 halves. Divide by the result, you're going to get 2 thirds times 1 plus t to the 3 halves power evaluated from 0 to 15. Um, so this is going to be 2 thirds times, so you plug in 15 and you plug in zero. So this is gonna be 16 to the 3 halves power minus 2 thirds of one to the 3 halves power. I got 42, nice. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. Calculating arc length isn't so bad, um, depending on really just how difficult the integral is to work out. And to find the unit tangent vector, what you need to do is to just take the velocity and rescale it down by the magnitude of the velocity. Um, this kind of leaves us with a question though. If I have a path that I would like to take and I choose a parameterization for that path, is the arc length going to be different depending on which parameterization I chose? Come up with two parameterizations for the same curve. Parameterization number one has the particle move around the curve in two pi seconds, and parameterization two has the particle move around the curve in pi seconds. Here is the graph according to Calcplot 3D. So we can see as the particle moves around this helix upwards and around, the uh, velocity arrow, that's what I have the computer graphing, is just the velocity arrow. You can see that velocity arrow does not change as it goes around the helix. You can see it does always stay the same length. So what I'm going to do is change this to the other parameterization. And uh, so when I push enter on the 
uh, on the graph, it will it will refresh. What I what I predict you'll see is the blue curve not changing. It's going to remain the same path, but that black arrow that represents the velocity should be longer because the new one goes around faster. So let's see. So there it is. the The blue curve didn't change, and this particle moves around the curve. Um, faster, but it traces out the same path. So I'm going to calculate both of these arc lengths. And if we've done this math right, we better get the same answer because I don't want to use a mathematical model that has um, the same curve have two different lengths. So I'm calculating the arc length according to parameterization number one, the slower moving path. So this is going to be the integral from zero to two pi. So you got to remember to take derivatives of position to get velocity. So that's what I did there. And then you use the Pythagorean theorem to find the speed. And then in this problem, this is kind of nice, and this happens a lot, you can see that um, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So I've got one here plus another one there. So in this whole thing is going to be the square root of two dt. So this special time, uh, this particle is moving at a constant speed. Usually you should get a variable there, but this is actually consistent with what Calcplot3D showed us, which was that the length of that black arrow doesn't change and the math agrees with us, right? It's uh, the speed is constant here. So I'm getting two pi times the square root of two. Uh, I really hope that parameterization number two gives us the same answer. All right, so this is the same as before. I calculate some derivatives to find the velocity. So don't forget the chain rule. Um, that's where this two comes from right there. And then this right here is really four sine squared plus four cosine squared, so I can factor this out. So this is four plus four. So inside here, I'm getting the square root of eight dt, which is uh, the square root of eight times pi. So the square root of eight is four and two, so I can bring that four outside the square root. So here I get uh, two square root of two, so I'll put the pi in front, so two pi square root of two. Um, so yay, it worked. I did actually get, um, I did actually get the same arc length for both parameterizations. So does arc length depend on parameterization? No, most def, it does not depend on parameterization.